now that we're in the shop, it's time to take off this gold collar. As I mentioned earlier, I took off the largest guide ring on the largest section to improve uh, line lay from the tip of the rod through all the guides to the spinning reel uh, when it's mounted. I also removed the uh, crown bezel that freely spun at the uh, foregrip of the rod. Um, I took a Dremel with a cut off disc and uh, nipped the crown all the way around it till it came in uh, two pieces and uh, then uh, broke it off with a pair of snips. This metal is really soft. I think it's just uh, some kind of aluminum. This metal actually is really tough. I think it's uh, steel anchors or steel um, feet that hold up that guide. Now I have my Dremel tool, but I suspect that this is just held down with glue. So I'm gonna take a pair of pliers on its widest uh, setting, and I'm gonna grip the collar, try to spin it to break the glue, and if it breaks and spins out freely, I'm gonna then uh, cut it down very carefully with the Dremel tool. Give it a nice firm squeeze and break the setting. And there you go. Nice and freely spinning. The main reason why I did that is to unseat it away from the real seat. I don't want to nick this as I'm cutting it, um, cutting it with uh, my blade here. So I'm going to back it away from uh, my real seat material and uh, very carefully cut down this collar. Almost like surgery. You want to pull this apart without breaking, without compromising the carbon fiber uh, fiberglass tubing. Now it's okay it's a little scratched because what I do next is totally going to cover this up. Again, when holding uh, your fishing reel, there's a good chance that your hand and fingers are going to be all over this area, so you want to make it as comfortable as possible. If uh, Casking had this EVA foam applied to their foregrip like they do their butt grip, I wouldn't consider you know, redoing this grip, but uh, because I'm going to have to rebuild this, um, the best thing I can come up with is uh, this shrink-wrapped grip tubing specifically made for fishing rods. And the rubber grip is actually uh, great for maintaining grip uh, when your hands are covered in bait and uh, it's easy to clean. So I plan on taking um, this grip and applying it to this rod and uh, just making the whole thing um, in an all black, uh, kind of uh, blacked out aesthetic. I think it'll look really cool. So before I do that, I'm gonna to have to rebuild uh, this uh, gap, this cavity, now that the bezel's gone. I just need to build up uh, this area just high enough so that uh, when shrunk down, the rubber grip um, kind of has a nice smooth, um, you know, no gap, no bump transition from foregrip to a uh, real seat here. So I'm gonna build up this little area with some electrical tape. I know there's a lot of rod builders out there that are probably cringing, but you know, for a $30 rod, um, it's not too bad. And I think it's gonna fit the bill for what I need it for. Now the next step, and probably the most difficult step, is taking a piece of this foregrip, working it over the butt end, over the reel seat, and onto the foregrip. Now I'm gonna wanna take that rubber shrink wrap and go a little long on the reel clamp itself and over this bezel here. I could always come back with an X-Acto knife and trim off the excess. I don't want to go too short because I don't want to be left with a gap um, between the reel seat and the foregrip. All right, that took a bit of effort, but I finally worked uh, this piece of shrink wrap over the butt end and uh, the reel seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of loosely fit it over the foregrip and I'm gonna apply a flame to it uh, ever so slowly and let it uh, slowly shrink around the foregrip area. The tighter it gets, uh, the more I'm going to work it onto the desired location and when I think it's uh, where it's going to finally sit, I'll go ahead and apply the flame uh, full tilt and hopefully it'll shrink in place. Well, there you go. It took a while. But I finally got the shrink wrap to shrink around tight. Um, I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit with the flame, and if this loosens up uh, a little bit, I'm gonna peel it back a touch and put some super glue and uh, see if it holds fast. But it gives me the finish I want. I'm gonna come back and trim this off with an X Acto knife, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for the butt end.
So now I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife and kind of carve out any excess material um, from the plug end of the butt end of this rod, just enough so I can get that plug uh, nice and tight and flush with the bottom of um, the shrink wrap. I went ahead and trimmed the excess uh, by the thread and I want to pass my flame over the top of this shrink wrap just one more time to ensure that I uh, shrink or melt off any burrs and to ensure the butt end of this wrap uh, adheres and grabs onto uh, the bottom thread of uh, the real seat. Nice and warm, nice and pliable, nice and tight. It's time to add the counterbalance to the butt end of this rod. Now I found that for the 8 foot 10 version, three 1 ounce egg weights rolled uh, in a row in a bag um, is the perfect amount of weight and uh, counterbalance uh, application uh, for this rod. Just put them in a row, roll them uh, nice and tight, and use the provided cavity that uh, this rod has. Now it's not advertised uh, in any of the listings, but this rod actually has a kind of secret compartment in the butt end uh, where you can store, you know, tackle and whatever you want. Um, I like to put my counterbalance uh, weights in this uh, hidden compartment. And I wrap it in a bag just to keep the weights from sliding around. And uh, three egg weights in a row in a baggie seems to be the perfect amount of weight to counterbalance uh, the length of this rod. And I found no matter how tight I tighten the real seat, um, the bottom foot clamp here, the, the real feet were just uh, slipping around for my 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 size reels. So I took a little piece of rubber, uh, shoved it in there, and it's just enough of a cushion and a shim to keep uh, those reels nice and solid. If you like this review and you like this rod, go ahead and click on the link below. Any purchases made through that associate link directly support the channel. And full disclosure, Casking didn't supply this rod for a review. I bought it on my own dime and it's an unbiased review. Um, you know, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have made the video. So go ahead and pick one up. I think you'll like it. Uh, with these simple modifications, you can turn a good rod into a great rod. Um, tight lines. Maybe I'll see you guys on the shore.